I want to bring in Michelle Greenstein now because I, I want to expand this conversation to 5G, where China is essentially saying that uh, they're really not a one-trick pony here. See, they're not just about cell phones. This is what they're saying. Their big winner is going to be 5G, and nobody can beat them there, they think. But tonight, there are more questions about the eventual safety of 5G. Remember last week, we had a hit piece done to us by the New York Times accusing us of raising questions about the safety of 5G because we're trying to pull off a, a, <laughs> a Putin ploy. It was as laughable as it was insulting, right? Now, lo and behold, a bunch of people have been coming to our defense on this one. Deborah Lee Davis is a PhD and the president of Environmental Health Trust and a visiting professor of medicine at the Hebrew University Hadassah Medical School. She writes, these otherwise credible media sources, referring to the New York Times, ignore the substantial body of science pinpointing hazards of wireless radiation and 5G detailed in independent journalistic investigations that have appeared extensively in media throughout Europe and have been covered by major networks. Then she goes on to say something I didn't even know. She writes this. I didn't know this. She says, Russia's 50 years of research on electromagnetic radiation since the Cold War has led to its clear understanding that this exposure does have biological effects. I guess if anybody knows about radiation, it's the Russians, right? Joining us now, our uh, special correspondent, Michelle Greenstein. This is fascinating. What else does the good doctor say in this, uh, in this extensive uh, review that she just wrote? You know, my favorite thing that she said is she drew a parallel between what's happening now with wireless technology and what happened decades ago with tobacco. Mm. As you know, scientists who showed the harmful effects of tobacco, they struggled with getting media attention, they were discredited, they struggled with getting financial support for their research. Probably and, accused of knowing Putin. Right, probably communist <laughs> propaganda as well. Um, but their research was really only accepted after the sickness and death that came from tobacco was so widespread that it was undeniable. Now, she says that the telecom industry makes the tobacco industry look like amateurs when it comes to discrediting wow. scientists, which is a huge claim because we all know how that went down decades ago. Now, here's another point she makes. The National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health, the Department of Health, and the EPA all once did research on the harmful effects of wireless radiation, but not anymore because of the pressure that comes from this powerful wireless industry. So the New York Times can dismiss, you know, concerns about radiation as Russian propaganda, but the fact is 5G's health risks are real. In fact, the UN's World Health Organization even classified wireless radiation and cell phones as a possible carcinogen. On top of that, a longtime World Health Organization advisor mm. said the evidence that wireless radiation is carcinogen carcinogenic since that classification is, quote, undeniable and can no longer be ignored. We also have work from Swedish oncologists who are known for their work on Agent Orange. They're calling for an updated review by the World Health Organization. And as of January 20 uh, of this year, these people aren't alone. 247 scientists from over 40 countries who together have published over 2,000 peer-reviewed scientific articles linking wireless radiation wow. to biological effects have said the UN needs to update its classification. And nobody's well. saying it's a smack down hard evidence thing, but there's certain Certainly questions that need to be asked. Well, By the way, I don't know. Are those no, 247 I, scientists Russian agents? Uh, I mean, well, no, it's but just I do insulting. have to ask you this. This sure. woman who wrote this review, who mentions that the Russians have been doing for years a lot of studies on radiation, I didn't know about that. I didn't, actually, didn't, I didn't know, know that either. I didn't it know was that interesting. Either. I did I, read that though, yeah, yes. this morning. So just in case New York Times is watching and they think, aha, we slipped in a Russian. Right, right, right. Uh, this woman, I don't no, do I didn't, know. No, I didn't know that either. I, I didn't even know who this woman is. The only reason I know of her <laughs> is because of my research on 5G, but I didn't know about the Russian thing. I didn't. Um, let me ask, let me bring sure, you into it because we're down to 30 yeah. seconds. Uh, what she just said, there's things that need to be studied. On the other hand, it's going to be a fabulous technology that's going to help all of us. Exactly. How do you, how do you, how do you find that uh, place in the middle for this? I think it all just takes time. We need to spend extensive money, and, and we need to actually have some testing ground. And that's essentially what Huawei did. They were in the process of locking up contracts to have solid testing grounds mm. to deploy their 5G networks. Right now, they're being stonewalled. Yeah, and, and, and it's gotten very political, as exactly. a matter of fact. And there's money involved. You guys are great. Thank you very much, Thanks, both Rick. of you. We really very much appreciate it. I'm Rick Sanchez. You found us on YouTube, and that's awesome. But you know what? I'm also live every night at 7 and 8 p.m. Eastern on DirecTV and Dish and Cable and Satellite, the RT app, oh, and Pluto TV. I'll see you there.